Well, that's the end of that drawing. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Our Set Play, and today I am going to be showing you how I did a drawing that no longer exists, or at least not in its original form. It kind of exists in a bunch of little pieces now. I think we've all been there. <laughs> and I almost did not even post this video. And then I realized that I think that this is a subject that's really relatable, and that is the fact that sometimes artwork just does not turn out the way we want it to. As artists, we we can be perfectionists and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to create wonderful, beautiful artwork or artwork that is better than our last artwork. And it can be a lot of unnecessary stress. And I think that it's important for me to show that this happens to me as well. Because I know a lot of times when we post on social media, we post our most beautiful artwork or we show our best sides or we try to be chipper. And in actuality, sometimes things just suck. <laughs> sometimes we don't like what we're doing. And this drawing, I wanted to do a pastel, no, sorry, not a pastel drawing, a charcoal drawing because I hadn't really done any charcoal on my channel and I thought it would be good. And I wanted to try a different paper than what I normally work with with charcoal and that was my mistake so that was really where things went wrong here i'm using the art spectrum color fix smooth pastel paper and it's made for pastels so i figured it would be okay for for charcoal because they're very similar however <laughs> a lot it just did not take the layers that i wanted and ah oh, it was so annoying and i didn't want to have to use fixative in between every single mark that I made and so I just kept kind of pushing through and it just did not come out the way I liked. Now it's not the most horrible drawing in the world. It's probably not even the most horrible drawing that I've ever done. However, I didn't like it. Sometimes that happens. I just did not like it. I am wanting to do a another piece maybe with this subject on different paper but the reason why one of the reasons why I chose this paper was because I wanted to be able to work with water with my charcoal because I do that quite a lot, which is something that I picked up on when I was in school. Charcoal is actually pretty water soluble and that's how I'm able to get those nice, dense, dark, matte looking blacks in the background. And I love using that technique and it's also fun to get drips and it's really great to experiment with your charcoal. Definitely try it. And um, when I finally do redo this drawing or maybe a different drawing in charcoal, I'll show you some of those techniques. And that's what I kind of set out to do with this drawing. It just didn't end up happening. And uh, I mean, you can see me using some water with it and stuff like that, but it just, I don't know. It was one of those things. I was not in a great mindset to create to begin with. And by the end of it, I, I was not attached to this drawing at all whatsoever, which is kind of a relief because there are times when I'm really frustrated and I do something to ruin a drawing that I probably could have fixed and that I was really attached to and I had a lot of effort in. This one really didn't take that long and because I had set out with a mindset to experiment, I wasn't as emotional about it when I ended up tearing it up in the end. I just didn't want to look at it anymore, so I tore it up. <laughs> and it's not often that I do that, but it happened. And I think my husband was pretty upset too. He's like, you're supposed to show me these things before you tear. I'm like, nah, it's gone. It's done. And I actually had originally deleted the footage and then I was able to get the footage back and decided, you know what? I should actually do a video about this because I know people can relate to this. I know other artists know how this feels. And I just want to let you know, artists at any level go through this. You may see the most beautiful artwork online, but that does not mean that the artist doesn't have a pile of crap in the trash can or pieces that they didn't finish because they didn't like, or there's just so many different ways. Most artists go through this. And even if it's not often, I mean, there's some artists that may not go through it as often as others, but I wager a guess that every single artist has gone through this at one point in time. I have a degree in art. I have been painting and drawing my whole life. And I, this is definitely not my first time working with charcoal and I still went through this. So if you're new and you're going through this, don't worry about it. This, you're just, that's, it's just an artist thing. Like we all go through it. It doesn't matter what level of art you're at. 
there are times when you're going to be drawing or painting something that totally pisses you off and you're just over it. Or sometimes things just don't work out. Like this one, it wasn't so much my techniques, it was my techniques combined with the materials I was using. I just don't think that this paper worked well with my techniques and with charcoal. Sorry if you hear noises in the background. My cat is being a pest and jumping up on the counter. <laughs> you may also hear my chair squeaking because I need a new chair. So, you know, that's fun. So I have the feeling that <laughs> the quality of this video is going to go right in line with the drawing I'm talking about. But anyway, so all this to say that just go easy on yourself if you're going through this because we've all been there. It's okay to fail. And failure is not actually failure. We learn something when we fail. Mistakes lead to learning. You learn faster. Pain makes you learn faster. I know that sounds awful, but that's why we don't touch hot stoves, right? Like you learn through pain. You learn through mistakes. You learn through many other horrible situations not to do certain things again. It's human nature, really. And I'm sorry if you can hear my chickens in the background. This is, <laughs> this is just the kind of luck I'm having with this video. But anyways, it's human nature to learn through mistakes. So I learned through this that I'm not really going to ever use this paper again for charcoal. I'm not even sure I want to try it with pastels now. I do like their fine tooth pastel paper. It's pretty good. That's the sanded paper. It's not bad. It's not as even. There's kind of, it's rough around the edges. And so there's some pieces where the tooth or the sand has fallen off around the edges. But I used that for my pumpkin that I did in oil pastels. And I really liked that paper. And it is acid free because I tested the back. And this paper that I'm using here is acid free as well. I just have a feeling that if it's not working well with charcoal, I may not like it for my personal style with pastels either. So that being said, other people may love this paper. It's really not a horrible paper. I chose it because it's heavyweight enough to take a little bit of water and I just thought that it would be good. And I actually kind of, I like the texture. It's kind of like a gessoed texture. I don't know how to describe it but I don't know. What is your favorite paper to use with charcoal? I'm not a huge fan of the ones that have like the weird <sighs> circular texture on it. Like I like Canson Me Tints, but I always use the smooth side no matter what medium I'm using because I cannot stand the textured side. I just don't like the pattern it has. I'm not into that. I don't want a mechanical looking pattern in my paper. So let me know what your favorite paper is to use with charcoal. I, in school, I used a lot of different craft type paper and things like that very inexpensive so it took it like it did what I needed it to do but it's also artwork that I didn't plan on selling so I want a good paper that I can use with charcoal that will take the layers I want but it can also take a little bit of water since I like to do that technique and I'm not sure if you can hear that in the background but I have chickens <laughs> and they're out in the backyard uh, partying apparently because they just really really want to run their mouths today well, Mama does her voiceover because that's the luck with this video. So I did use a bunch of different blending tools here that you'll see. There's the regular old standby, um, the, you know, tort tortillions or paper stumps, whatever you want to call them. I also used a, it's kind of like a soft tool, but it's actually by Jane Davenport. So I use, and then I use my fingers a lot too. And I'm using various charcoal. I think I have some generals charcoal. It's, I think it's mostly generals. I have some Blick brand charcoal and I can't remember the brand. I have some that I used that I had left over from school. I don't remember the brand. Charcoal is a very inexpensive way to create. And it's a great way to learn because if you start out with black and white, then you're automatically gonna learn values. And that's very important even when you're working in color. Values are what gives you your pop, is what gives you your realism, and so it's very good to learn in black and white. And usually when I work in black and white, if I'm working in charcoal or graphite, I really like to dramatize that contrast. Like I really like the dark, dark, darks, and you're seeing that here. And I really did enjoy that about this piece. I feel like this rose kind of looks like something you would see in like the Munsters or on like some old black and white spooky show and that's what it made me think of and I was like I was really feeling that aspect of it 
But by the time I got to the end of it, it just was not, <laughs> just not what I wanted. And I was ready to let go. And I'm actually surprised at myself with being as okay with it as I was, because typically I'm a little bit more attached to my work. And this time I just wasn't. I was like, this isn't it, and I'm ready to let it go. And at some point, you'll actually see me get really experimental. Towards the end, I actually try to add some pan pastels into the mix, and holy moly, that was not, that wasn't it either. And you'll see that. It just didn't, it didn't want to blend out right. It was blotchy. That was the problem. Like, it was the blends were blotchy on this paper. I was not pleased. And then in some places, it would just wipe the charcoal off. It just like, it would not stick enough. I probably should have tried their sanded paper instead in actuality, but I think I'll just go back to using me tints and just using like the, the smooth side that I like. I just want to be able to get enough layers and it's harder to use a whole lot of water on that paper. So, but yes. <laughs> Have you ever torn up a drawing or a painting? I think there was one time, and I couldn't tell you what the painting was, it was years ago, that I actually stuck a paintbrush through a canvas. <laughs> yeah, you're learning a lot about me today, folks. <laughs> but it's true, like, I got so angry. I was so mad that I I literally stuck the backside of a paintbrush right through the canvas, and I... Uh, I can't even tell you what the painting was now. So like that goes to show you like life moves on and I'm fine. And I've created hundreds of paintings and drawings since then that I have loved and haven't had to mutilate. And you know, it happens. It does happen. I think I, I couldn't tell you how many paintbrushes I've broken when I'm frustrated. I couldn't tell you how many <sighs> tubes of paint have flown across the room or, um, Actually, when I was working on my my sky series for my senior thesis project, I and again, this came from working on the wrong surface. I need to stop experimenting. Apparently, no, I'm never going to stop experimenting. But at this point in my life, I should not have been experimenting because I had a deadline. And so I was really under the pressure and I was using a surface that I just did not like. I think it was a blick panel, but it was just too smooth and it was making my paint streaky and it just was not working for me. And I literally, I stomped on it. <laughs> I threw it on the floor and I stomped it. Like I stomped the smithereens out of it. And that was the end of that one. But I restarted and I actually restarted on a similar surface. It may have even been the same kind of the same surface, but I had learned from what wasn't working before and I restarted and now actually I'll show you the painting like it actually I liked it the second time and again I'm okay I finished my sky series everything was fine wasted a little bit of money but I was fine and I'm gonna be fine after this one too see there's that ugly pink I got rid of it it's gone now anyways thank you so much for watching I just wanted to share this with you guys to let you know that it's okay to fail at your art because it's really not a failure. You're going to learn from it. You'll move on. And next time you'll, you'll know better of what, you know, you'll know what you like better and you'll know what to do better. And, you know, we all have trashed some art every once in a while. So don't be down on yourself about it because I'm not. I actually kind of find it funny at this point. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, coming up, I plan on doing... A review of the Holbein watercolors. I'm hoping that'll be out next week, if not the week after. And I do want to do a, a tutorial on how I use oil pastels with colored pencils. I'm probably going to put a poll up soon about a subject, so just keep your eyes open for that. All right, so I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.